this video we're going to learn how to do the double iris chain and as you can see this is what it would look like if you're to make an entire quilt with this block or just a table runner or a pillow this is the individual block itself and as you can see your doilies and dresden's quilt is filling up rather nicely the only thing left after this is that little corner block so some of the supplies that we'll need, we're going to be doing the 5 inch block. So I've gone ahead and circled my 5 inch size fabric that I need to cut. So I need a background and a backing fabric. That's all I need since it's basically an embroidered block. And I've decided to use this real pretty pink shaded for my background and this for my backing. And then the threads that we're going to need is we're going to need an embroidery bobbin thread some Vanish Light Water Soluble Thread. We need our quilting thread, which I have to match my fabric, our thread A, and also our thread D. So let's get started making our double iris chain. So this is one color of our double iris chain, and here's just another color that I did as I was doing some of my test sewing. So we're gonna do the five inch block, and I have my battleizer in the hoop, for step one, we're going to have embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin and just a neutral color thread or you can even go with the water soluble thread if you want to. I have the pink thread in there just so that you can see it better on the camera. And basically this is just a placement stitch for where the wool batting will go. Step two is where we're going to add our optional wool batting. If you decide that you're not going to be using wool batting option, then just go ahead and skip this step and go right to step three but for those who are you're going to place water soluble thread in the needle and you're going to use that placement stitch from step one is where to place your batting and as you can see the batting is cut to the appropriate size and then it's just been, been touched with an iron just on the edge about a quarter of an inch so that it lays flatter so you can sew the zigzag stitches so step two water soluble thread in the needle and it will sew the zigzag stitch to attach the wool batting to the battleizer. For step three, we now have our wool batting on there and we're gonna continue with water soluble thread and we're just gonna center our background fabric over the wool batting and go ahead and stitch the basting stitch. For step four, it's going to do the first section of cross stitch and you're going to put your thread A in the needle only. You still have your embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin and you're going to begin sewing the cross stitch. Alright, for step five, which is next, I have thread D in the needle and, and still embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin. Here's our block so far as we've completed step five. For step six, we're going to add our backing fabric to the back of the block. And I have my backing fabric here, and I'm just going to center that over the block and then check it to make sure it's on there correctly. I used a little squirt of KK2000 to keep that on there. That's an optional or 505 adhesive spray. And then you could just do a quick peek underneath to make sure that it's the fabric did not flip over. And we are good. I have water soluble thread in the needle. So we're just, just going to stitch a basting stitch around the outside to hold the backing. So there's our backing fabric attached to the back of the block. Since we now have that backing fabric on, we're going to have to make sure that we always match our needle thread and our bobbin thread. We're going to have to make sure that our automatic thread cutter is turned off. For this particular step, step seven, we have thread A and the needle end in the bobbin. And for a cleaner, prettier looking back, you're going to always, after the backing fabric is added, bring that bobbin thread to the top before you begin stitching. For step eight, I have my thread D and the needle in the bobbin. I'm going to bring my bobbin thread to the top and begin the quilting stitch. Here's the back of the block, what it looks like with a completed step eight. And now for the final step nine, 
We are going to place our quilting thread in the needle and the bobbin, and we're going to begin the quilting step. So we make sure we bring that bobbin thread to the top before we begin stitching. 